Welcome to Word Wednesday with CCF Makati. Hey family, CCF Makati. Oh, I miss you all so much. But you know what? I'm truly grateful for this opportunity that I can come to you even though it's virtually. But you know what? I, I enjoy this so much because I know there are some saved folk at CCF Makati. Is that right? I know there are some people who love the Lord. Is that true? And I know there are some soldiers on the battlefield for the Lord. Where are you? Come on, soldiers. Let me hear you. Let me hear that cry. Because we are all on the battlefield for the Lord. And you know what? We are indeed at war. But you know what? We don't have to worry. Come on, let's go. Hey! I'm a soldier on the battlefield. And I'm fighting. Hey, I promised him I will serve him until I die. Yes, I'm fighting. Fighting for the Lord. I don't know about you. I've been up and I've been down, but I'm never turned around. I'm still fighting. Fighting for the Lord. On this Christian journey, I had heartaches and pain. Sunshine and rain. I'm still fighting. Yes, I fighting am. I want you to know this. If I hold out, hold out, hold out, that's right, hold out, then I know what I'll get my prize. Come on, let's say that again. Let me hear you. I'm a soldier on the battlefield and I'm fighting, fighting for the Lord. Hey, I promised him I will serve him until I die. Yes, I'm fighting. Oh, I don't know about you, but I've been up and up and down, but I'm never turned around. I'm still fighting, fighting for the Lord. On this Christian journey, I had heartaches and pain, sunshine and rain. I'm still fighting, yes I fighting am. For the Lord. But this is what I love. If I hold out, hold out, hold out, yeah. Let me hear you say that. Hold out. Come on, say. Hold out. Everybody say. Hold out. Hold out. Hold out. Hold out. Hold out. Let me hear you. Let me hear Hold you. Out. Everybody say. Hold out. Through the storm and rain. Hold out. To your hurt and pain. Hold out. Hold out. Then I know what. All right, come on, soldiers, let's get that war cry going. Come on, I'm on the battlefield for the Lord, fighting, fighting. What about you? I'm on the battlefield fighting for the Lord. Let me hear you say it. I'm on the battlefield fighting for the Lord. Come on, shout it out. I'm on the battlefield fighting for the Lord. Let me hear you, let me hear you. I'm on the battlefield fighting for the Lord. Let me hear you, let me hear you. Your turn. Let me hear you. Let me hear you. Awesome, homeboys. All right, come on, the men. Yeah. Now, everybody, I want to hear you. Come on, say. Come on, teacher Greg. Soldiers, <laughs> you know what? And I love about this battle that we're on. We're, we're more than conquerors, is what the word says. We're not just conquerors. We're more than conquerors. And the Lord sent the praise and worshipers out ahead of the soldiers. So you know what that says? <laughs> There's power in praise. <laughs> There's glory in healing. Oh, he's so good. Have I got a witness? <laughs> There's deliverance in praise. Yes, there is. <laughs> So, my hallelujah. 
Who's not ashamed? Come on, sing it with me. My hallelujah belongs to you. Mm, mm, mm. My hallelujah belongs to you. Can you hear me? My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, oh. My hallelujah belongs to you. I want you to know, Lord. You deserve it. You deserve it. Yes, you do. You deserve it. Yeah. You deserve it. Now, come on, everybody, sing it with me. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Don't look at your neighbors. Look towards heaven and tell them. My hallelujah belongs. Everybody say, My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, my hallelujah. Everybody say all of, all of the glory belongs to you. All of the glory, all of the glory belongs to you. Now come on, put it out in the atmosphere. You deserve it. Come on and say. Say, you deserve, yeah. Everybody say, you deserve, yeah. come on and say, you deserve, yeah. you deserve it. Oh, can you say, hallelujah, 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 all the glory, all the glory.
That's right, Lord. My hallelujah belongs to you. My thank you, Jesus. My glory, glory, because you are indeed worthy of all the praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Good evening, CCF Makati, and welcome to another Word Wednesday. We are so blessed that you're here, and we like to welcome you, and hopefully that you'll enjoy this message tonight. Um, for the first-timers, we want to know you also. If you're the first-timer, first-timers here tonight, just type it in the message box first, and the volunteers will get in touch with you and welcome you to our family. Motivate series of Pastor Peter is such a wonderful um, um, series. We are at the letter V, which is vision. And vision is very important to every one of us, right? Vision is important. If you, We have to have a vision for us. We have to have our vision for our family, our children, our disciples. If you don't have a vision, somehow, somewhere along the way, we'll get lost, right? So... We need to have our own vision. My question to you is, if you ask our Lord Jesus Christ about His vision for us, what do you think He'll say? Type in your answers, and we'll get back to you in a few seconds. Personally, me, if I ask Jesus Christ, I believe He'll tell me to be more and more like Him, to be Christ-like. If you search the Bible, there's so many verses in the Bible that tells us to be more and more like Him, to be transformed, to be like Jesus Christ. So, ergo the word Christian, Christian, right? In other words, little Christ or imitators of Jesus Christ. So I believe personally that's my His vision for me. We also have an ongoing project. We are distributing uh, meals to the people in need in barangays and uh, jeepney drivers and uh, inmates in Makati. So if you really want to help, it only it's just 40 pesos per pack for, for, for a meal that you can feed someone already. And if you want to know more about the details of this, all you have to do is call Enzo. He will tell you more about it. To those who have already given, and we are so blessed and encouraged for all the things that you have donated for this project. We thank you so much. And tonight, I am privileged to um, introduce to you our speaker for tonight. He's the head of GLC and my teacher. Please welcome teacher Greg Clark. Good evening and welcome to Word Wednesday. Tonight we are talking about the fifth letter in the word motivate, vision. But before we get there, Let's review. The first word was M for modeling, showing Christ's likeness to others so they want to copy it. The second letter is O for open communication. God gave us two ears and one mouth. We need to learn to listen. The third is T for time your most precious gift to give someone. The fourth is intimacy, intentional relationships. If we build a better relationship with God, it will help us to build a better relationship with others. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for the evening that you have brought us, Lord. We thank you that you are our mighty God, our God that continues to teach us every single day. Lord, we pray for all those that are listening right now, Father. May they be blessed by your word, Father. May they be able to apply this word into their lives, Lord. Lord, we lift up this night. I am not worthy to teach this, Father. But through the Holy Spirit, Father, I pray that your words will come through me and that your message will be clear. We thank you for this, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight, we talk about vision. In the comment section, please write, what is your current vision for yourself? I will wait. My current vision in life is to not only disciple my family, but to teach others 
how to do the same in their life by knowing God better. So why is vision so important? You see, vision gives you a direction. Without vision, this verse from last Sunday states what will happen. It comes from Proverbs 29, where there is no vision, the people are unrestrained, but happy is he who keeps the law. What does that mean? If you have no vision, you will walk around not knowing why you are going in a certain direction. Thus, you will always be in a state of chaos. Is this good? You make that decision, as God has given us free will. But with God, it is not good. So what do we usually tie a vision to? A mission. The mission for Christians based on scripture is what? To make disciples. This is found in Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20. And Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe that all I command you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You see, without that mission that God commanded us to do, what would we be doing as Christians? God left us with a vision, but most of us have either yet to see it or refuse to want to see it. We all have gifts. And we all have work to do according to scripture. My anchor verses in life are Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Let's read it together. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. You see, I believe that God gave us all gifts that we don't know about. But in this verse, he had work for his children to do for his kingdom. Ask yourself, is your vision the same as it was before you came into Christ? Mine wasn't. I have always had clear visions. They just weren't God's vision of me. In high school, I wanted to fly Air Force jets. That went away as I grew too big and too tall to fit in one in my sophomore year. In college, I wanted to play pro ball. Well, I blew out my knee, so no pro ball. After college, I wanted to be the best journalist I could be. I was in my eyes. Don't get me wrong. I considered myself good, but I was also following my own holy trinity at the time. Me, myself, and I. I controlled my destiny. So then I changed to learning the internet world. When it was just starting out in the late 90s, I became good at it. But you see, all these visions were not centered around God, and he had other plans. Here we go, back to verse 10 of chapter 2 of Ephesians. His plan for me was to teach his word first to children in kids' church, then to adults in biblical studies. You see, until we truly surrender ourselves to God, we will never know what our godly vision is. This is why Pastor Peter's quote based on Mark Twain's quote is so moving. The three most important days of your life for Christians are the day you were born, the day you were born again, and the day you understand why you were born again. It is interesting how this quote is tied into Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. 
He had a plan for you before you were born. Let's see what God's vision is for a sister in Christ. Let's welcome Jin Liang. Good evening. My name is Jen Liang. Some of you might know me or have met me through our big singles ministry. Allow me to share with you God's story in my life. I live in the gig, but I work as a call center agent in Makati. And also, I'm a part-time teacher in Quezon City. I'm not a planner, so I avoid overlapping within my busy schedule. Even though our discipleship group session has a fixed schedule, I still plot it weekly to remind myself and to explain to others that that time is important and book already. Attending a group under Tita Gina Rodriguez and now Pastor Albit and learning from each person in the group that allow me to refuel my faith regularly and keep pressing on. Meeting ladies who are seeking him is also a top priority because I know how important a simple meetup, a deep discussion about God, or even just sharing one's victory can encourage each other to trust and obey God more. I also set aside time for attending GLC3 classes that focus on improving my leadership in my small group. Everything changed because of the pandemic. In the beginning, I found it convenient and safe because I was no longer required to drive from one place to another. I find more time to also take care of my physical self and more time to eat with the family without rushing. As time went by, I noticed that my work and personal life became, became inseparable. There are times that even on a weekend, I need to answer my students' queries or attend our department meetings for school activities. Anxiety, depression, stress, and all other negative emotions come to surface. I then ask God, why do I have all these negative vibes? Am I not walking in you? He then reminded me to rethink and refocus. Pastor Peter shared that a man-centered vision is all about himself, his own agenda, and it's temporal. But a God-centered vision is all about God's agenda and God's mission. It has eternal significance. I then realized that because of the work-from-home scenario, I am oddly losing my vision in him. The so-called chill time in Facebook browsing and TikTok has eaten into my joy in him and my time with him, and I found myself lost. That was where all the negativity is coming from. Since God gave me that realization, I began to slowly recalibrate, refocus, and most of all, guard my time each day to make sure that God is indeed taking the most priority in my life and that my vision for every day is aligned to his eternal vision for me, which he prepared already in advance for me to do so. I don't know if you have written your visions, your life visions. I don't know also if you, as a, as a small group leader like me, have set up your group's vision already. If not, I encourage you to spend time in coming up with one so that you will be guided daily on the path that you are to take each day. Life is fleeting, and we don't know how long we have. May we learn to number our days, and may God's vision in our life brings us, bring us to where he wants us to be and where we want to be in the end, which is to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. To God be all the glory. Thank you. You see, God gives us a vision, and then he takes us down the valley to mold us into the shape of that vision. 
It is in the valley that so many of us give up and faint. Every God-given vision will become real if we only have patience. Just think of the enormous amount of free time God has. He is never in a hurry, yet we are always in such a frantic hurry. While still in the light of the glory of the vision, we go right out to do things, but the vision is not yet real in us. God has to take us into the valley and put us through fires and floods to mold us into shape until we get to the point where he can trust us with the reality of the vision. Ever since God gave us the vision, he has been at work. He is getting us into the shape of the goal he has for us. And yet over and over again, we try to escape from the sculptor's hand in an effort to mold ourselves into the shape of our own goal. The vision that God gives is not some unattainable castle in the sky, but a vision of what God wants you to be down here. Allow the potter to put you on his wheel and whirl you around as he desires. Then as surely as God is God, you are you. You will turn out as an exact likeness of the vision. But don't lose heart in the process. If you have had a vision from God, you may try as you will to be satisfied on a lower level, but God will never allow it. As we close, what are you focused on? God's plan for you or your plan for you? Are they one and the same? After hearing this message and the one on Sunday, what is your I will statement? Thank you and God bless. Thank you for joining us here at Word Wednesday. If you are meeting with your D group tonight, here are the suggested breakout questions. We will pause while you take a screenshot. For those availing of a Zoom breakout room for their D group, kindly take note of the Zoom details or take a photo of the QR code on screen. Zoom rooms will be open till 10 p.m. If you haven't signed up for a breakout room, please let us know in the comments and we'd be glad to assist you. If you're with us for the first time, would like to be prayed over, or in need of counseling, please take note of the link or take a photo of the QR code on screen. Our volunteers would be glad to serve you. Once again, thank you for joining Word Wednesday. We hope to see you again next week right here at 6.30 p.m. Have a blessed evening.